What's up, tech fans from around the world? It's 6 a.m. here in Los Angeles, California. You're watching Tech of Tomorrow. I'm Elric, your host, and it's launch day for the brand new NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan X. The NVIDIA clearly states that this card is not for those who are on a meek budget. This is a card geared for those people who want to do overclocking and those people who don't care how much the damn card costs, they just want the best freaking shit they can get their hands on at the moment. And it's looking like the Titan X is going to be that bad boy. Now, not only is this brand new GPU, which is by the way is the GM200, it's replacing the GM204, I believe that was on the GTX uh, 980, so it's a brand new architecture texture all the way redesigned from the ground up and like I said it's totally geared for overclocking this thing actually has an eight phase power converter built in the car so you've got six phase of power dedicated to the GPU and another two that are dedicated to the memory so this is going to be awesome it's going to allow you to get that thing pump it up keep those voltages going without doing a bunch of modifications to the card so that's some pretty awesome stuff also, DirectX 12 APIs supported across the board, and VXGI is this brand new technology that's coming out which is going to allow game developers to do lighting effects in real time. So that means you don't have to do your lighting effects all canned and pre-rendered. It means they can be done pretty much like on the fly in the game. Now, I know the Unreal 4 engine is going to have this in them, and it's going to be something that everybody's going to want to check out because obviously it's going to look awesome and badass. Now, with that said, though, let's jump in and let's check out what the card looks like the specs, how it performs, and at the end of the day, why you as a gamer, if you've got the cash, you're going to want to get your hands on the brand new GeForce GTX Titan X. Visually, you guys can see the card looks pretty damn cool. It's got a glass plate window on the front, kind of like a cool case. Underneath that, you can see all of the heat fins and everything that keep the card cool. To the right, there's a single fan. We've got the nomenclature of the card, Titan clearly marked along the edge of the card. You also see the GeForce GTX logo on the side. Now, as far as power requirements go, the card features a single 8-pin and a single 6-pin connector. It's also recommended that you use 600 watts or more as your power supply. As you move the side of the card, you see the two SLI fingers. These are used to put your card in SLI mode in case you want to do that for getting even more kick-ass performance. As we flip around to the back side of the card, we can see all the components and everything. Now, being that it's a reference-based card, we don't see a backplate protector. Now, I know that other companies who make these, Asus, all the big companies, they're obviously going to make the card even more badass than this. But for now, this is what it looks like on the reference-based card. As we flip around to the back of the card, we can see the display outputs include one dual-link DVI, one HDMI, and three DisplayPort connectors. And last but not least, folks, for those people who are interested in what size this is, it's 10.5 inches long by 4 inches high by 2 inches wide. And that's pretty much it. Now, a big thing also about this card is it'll play all of the latest 4K games, but it's also geared to support all of the latest TVs. So all the latest state-of-the-art 5K TVs, this thing will connect to it and play at the resolution that you want to see on those TVs, which is actually pretty cool. And with that said, now let's check out the speeds and feeds. The beating heart of the new GeForce GTX Titan X is NVIDIA's latest GM200 GPU, and it's a beast. Pixel, vertex, and geometry shading duties are all handled by 3072 CUDA cores, while texture filtering is performed by 192 texture units. Texture filtering rate is 192 gigatexels a second. Now that's over 33% higher than the previous flagship GPU, the GTX 980. The GM200's memory subsystem is equally robust. With its 384-bit memory interface and 7 GHz memory clock, peak memory bandwidth is also 50% higher than with the GTX 980, which ran at 336.5 GB a second. The GM200 also ships with 3 MB of level 2 cache and 96 ROPs. Featuring a massive 12 GB of GDDR5 memory, gamers can now play the latest DirectX 12 games on the GeForce GTX Titan X at their very highest screen resolutions without having to worry about running out of graphics memory, which was something that happened in the past. The base clock speed of the GeForce GTX Titan X is 1000 MHz. The typical boost clock speed is 1075 MHz. The boost clock speed is based on the average GeForce GTX Titan X card running a wide variety of games and applications. One thing to take note of is that actual boost clock will vary from game to game depending on actual system conditions. The Titan X's memory speed is 7010 MHz effective data rate. 
The card also has a TDP of 250 watts and has a thermal threshold of 91 Celsius. This means that the card is designed actually to run very, very hot. Now the boost clock speed, the reason they say it's going to vary between game to game and system to system is because everybody's system is different. And the way that that boost clock works is it works off how cool the card is running. So cards that have these extreme aftermarket cooling solutions or liquid cooling are gonna be able to overclock much further than the reference card is. But the reference card is a great starting point for those wanting to jump in and just see how the thing does. One more quick thing also before I jump into the benchmarks, no, it's like holding those dogs back and wants to see the benchmarks, but this new GeForce GTX Titan X is totally geared for virtual reality and the Oculus Rift is actually going to have a product that's going to be working in conjunction with this card very soon. So not only you're going to be able to get all this 3D gaming you've got now, you'll also be able to take it to the next level whenever this new product comes out. So this thing's totally ready for everything next gen. Like I said, it's ready for next gen TVs, it's ready for next gen this, and it's also ready for obviously virtual reality through the Oculus thing. So that's pretty cool stuff. Now, with that said, let's jump in real quick. Let's check out our test system, and then let's check out those scores and the benchmarks. Now. So there you guys have it. Pretty much everything there is to know about the brand new NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan X. Now I know that I had a limited amount of tests that you guys saw when I released this review. That being the case, I apologize for that, but a lot of my cards were actually lent out or being used in systems that we're developing right now. I apologize about that. I'm actually moving all the testing stuff back here to my lab. I built a brand new test system here, and so everything will be back here in my lab, and I promise I will bring you guys overclocking, test against the 295X and a bunch of other cards right here in the future, but this was launch day. I only have the card really for about four days, so I try to get as much information, as much testing done in this time period. So I hope you guys are you know, pretty much happy this and still hit the like button. I apologize, but I'm, hey, I admit it. Uh, I just had very short time. I will do more for you guys in the future. But with that said, you guys can see that this card really is kicking butt. Doesn't even really run that hot. 42 Celsius under idle, 85 under full load. 
91 is a threshold. That means this card has much, much more potential that I even put into it whatsoever. Now, we did do the test in 4K, so you guys can see how it does perform in 4K. And we did some of those tests in regular resolutions as well. But this thing really is probably the king of the ring right now. There's probably nothing that can touch it as far as single GPUs go at all. As far as single GPU cards go, NVIDIA once again has become the king of the ring. Now, this is pretty much to be expected. I know AMD fans are going to go the next generation. I know. The next generation of AMD card may very well kick this card's ass. That's the name of the game. NVIDIA knows it just as well as I do and you do. So, But for right now, in this little frame time buffer in time, if you want to get a time capsule and come back to the day that NVIDIA reigned for the today, well, this will be one of those days because at the moment, this card is the king of the ring. It's coming to the market at about 900 bucks. So, you know, it's pricey. Like I said earlier in the video, this thing is not for the meek of the wallet. It's meant for the gamer who wants to overclock the shit out of his card and just go crazy. Now, me personally, I'm going to be calling my friend Gabe over Swift Tech, seeing if I can take this card, stick a water cooler in it, stick it in my gaming system back here behind me. And, uh, I mean, we're closing the video out, so I guess I might as well tell you, the green system, find the... Yep. Finally took a dump on me, so replace with this system right here. We'll talk about it later. I know you guys have been asking me for a PC gaming tour. I just want to say, guys, those guys who have stayed along this long, uh, I'm going back to my PC roots. So there'll be much, much more PC stuff going on. So thanks for watching Tech of Tomorrow. I'm Elric. Like usual, more information about this car will be down there below that like button. Hopefully you'll hit it. And uh, I love you folks and hope to see you guys back here on Tech of Tomorrow. So thanks for watching here on launch day of the brand new NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan X.